Tan 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 Hey everybody, this is Alchemisted, and this is Star Trek Online. So Season 8 has just launched, and I have not done a Fleet Ops in a while, so... <coughs> while I'm still convalescing from my <coughs> cough, ah. I'm going to uh, uh, give a little bit of a status report on our current fleet holdings, and also try and find the Spire. I couldn't get to the Spire holding, but uh, we have named it Victory Spire. Uh, because Victory Games has just been closed by Electronic Arts, and so it fits into the naming scheme of things that Electronic Arts has destroyed under its heel. And studios that will be remembered, even though they were part of Electronic Arts for a long time, and uh, basically went to crap. So, we currently have... Let's, let me go ahead and log in. Uh, I've only got three characters. I've trimmed down my characters. I used to have, like, a, a bunch of Starfleet alts, and I, I got rid of those um, because I don't want to have, like, tons of alts for the same faction. I want every alt I have to be different. You know, I want them all to be different so it's a different experience, so when I, like, go to get Dilithium on each of my alts, you know, I don't. it doesn't feel like I'm playing the same thing over and over and over again, which I am doing, but I'm playing it in a different way, so it's not as repetitive. Um, it doesn't feel as repetitive, I should say. So we got, uh, DP, the ma main character, got Ren, um, he used to be called Brack, uh, cause that was what came out in the, uh, name generator. I always hated the name, but, uh, I made him in a hurry to claim the Nanopulse Lurpas. So I did, didn't really have a character in mind for him at the time, now I do, so I had to rename him. And uh, spent some zen on Kanan here, who is my Romulan guy. So you can't see his crew for whatever reason. He has one. He's got like he's got four other peeps that he rolls around with. But um, I spent some zen on the helmet from the uh, TOS. I wanted the helmet. I got to have the helmet so I could have um, Captain Remus and his Howling Commandos, basically. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, still in the Romulan hoopty though. Uh, what's Ren using? Ren's got the um, getting. I'm getting a lot of mileage out of the uh, Klingon Academy. I wish the Klingon Academy was the default look for Klingons in this game because Klingon Academy looks really cool, and um, I'm so sick of the Kiss costumes. All right, let's go ahead and uh, hit play. And also, if we could... F ah, loading screen. There we go. Lag. Material files reloaded. Why? Why are you reloading them? Why? Why? So, is Pycana still going to be schizophrenic? This is the question. No, Pycanus is going to be normal. If you've watched the video prior to this one, you're going to know why I was, <laughs> I was wondering if Pycanus was schizophrenic. So, um... Hmm. Uh, I think I'm just gonna make this a general "What's up with the game now?" video. Um, it's also a t uh, chance for me to uh, uh, test out my new editing, editing, editing software. How is that provision project? Oh, it's done. Excellent. Um, let's see, I don't let's see. Dump some civilians in there. So, um. We have actually made quite a bit of progress. How many industrial energy cells do I have first? 53. Uh, okay. I'll save the dilithium to put in last. I want to get everything else filled in first. Um, because I'm trying to build up Zen. Uh, after, like, buying a rename for Brack, because his first name was ridiculous. And, uh, Captain Rehan... Or Commander Rehan, sorry. Commander Rehan's helmet. Um, let's see. So, this is the, the dilithium mine, Outpost Mythic. Um, we are at Tier 1 on everything, halfway to Tier 2 um, on the Dilithium Mine, almost halfway to Tier 2 on Development. I think that's what we're going to hit first, in fact. But 
Yeah, we're going to hit that first, but I want to do some provision projects for trade, because trade gets you um, armor and RCS consoles. And the Mark 10 fleet armor and RCS consoles are actually better than Mark 11 ones. So, yeah, I want to get that provision so people can start um, equipping those and having an easier time of it all. And, uh, yeah, but uh, we're probably going to be hitting development first. <coughs> so, yeah, this is Outpost Mythic. Uh, I used to call it Mythic Base, but I didn't really like the name. Uh, I didn't like the way that name sounds. So Outpost Mythic sounds a little bit better. And this is our uh, this is the mine I was showing off, and we'll go visit that. Um, in case we don't get there, this is Victory Spire. We like we only have like the limited time, you know, just in case we get like new members and they want to like do that, they can. But we're not going to be focusing on that. Um, we don't have anything slotted for this, in fact. Uh, so let's see. Power Spire exterior. Let's see, construct personal transport teleporter. So yeah, we haven't uh, actually gotten started on this. It just launched yesterday. Uh, we're still going to be focusing on the mine because the mine gives us um, discounts on item and mark and dilithium input uh, requirements. So we're still focusing on the mine. The mine is what we're going to be getting done um, because this thing will help us all. And it will also reduce the cooldown on the Azura, which used to be one hour. Then they made it two hours, so you could take a cooldown through the fleet system to make it one hour again. Does that make sense? No. Um, but that's what they've done. Uh, let's see. Seismic stabilizers, we need a bunch of those. Fleet marks. Uh, where am I on the DOF system? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, do I have... Okay, uh, military. Military is at 112. All right. I'll have to visit the uh, star base. Um, how much? How many energy credits do I have? I'll refine that dilithium. Uh, I need to gather 6,575 more. Okay. Um, so they're throwing the Dyson Sphere marks. Okay, good. Also, the insane amount of currencies we're starting to get. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, add in Borg neural processors. That's eleven. Things are start low buy. Add in like low buy, and you get twelve. So things are starting to get a little crazy here. I thought the whole point of dilithium was to take all the insane amounts of currencies we had and put them all in one place. You know, make them all one thing and like cut out like get rid of the fuss. Um, Apparently not, because uh, we are we are we are all over. We are running. Our cup runneth over with currencies suddenly. Um, so let's go ahead and go second wave. I'm blowing eighteen thousand. Oh wait, I should do that. I didn't do this because the game was wigging out on me yesterday, and I was. It was kind. It, it was. It was not a good. It was a good thing to record. It was really fun to record. I think I'm just going to get, like, a ton of marks um, through, like, the PvE queue and just, like, get five of these uh, joint command commendations. I think that's how I'm going to do that. Um, these only take... These projects only take an hour, um, but they are only 150 each. So, kind of got to, like, weigh where you want to, like, put that now. I'm not sure if it's faster or not. Um... Let's see, sponsor. I need to, like, do some PvE stuff, too, because I need to, like, sponsor some of my alts. Um, probably Ren first, because Ren is already Vice Admiral, so I, I'll, like, do the sponsoring stuff for him first, and then I'll do the sponsoring stuff for Kanan. Commander Rehan and his Howling Commandos once they're, um... Is it Admiral and Romulan? I think it's, it's, it's Admiral and Romulan. I'm pretty sure it's some form of Admiral. Um... Because you got, what do you got? You got um, Lieutenant, sub you got Sub-Lieutenant, you got Centurion, Sub-Lieutenant, Lieutenant, um, Sub-Commander, Commander, um, Admiral, Admiral? I don't know. They haven't raised the rank to Admiral yet. Still waiting for them to do that. I think they're trying to get the first officer system to work first, and then they're going to, like, try and get, like, the, f the, the uh, secondary ship system working first and figure out how that works. Um... Personally, I would just like it if, like, maps, 
if they were just like uh, if you you could just like fly everywhere with them and they weren't a summon, which is what I'm afraid they're gonna do. They're gonna make it something that's like summon for 60 seconds. No, um, I want a a fleet. I want a ship to come with me wherever I go, and maybe in certain maps, you know, you can't, they can't, it isn't allowed to spawn, like Fleet Alert, or, you know, think like PvE queues or PvP queue maps, you know, you know, or maps like that are adventure zones that are already packed, they're not allowed to spawn, that might be, that might be good, you know, and just like everywhere else, once you enter a mission map, they spawn and follow you, that'd be great. Um, I really hope they go that direction. I hope they don't make it a summon, because that would suck. Well, let's go ahead and transwarp to um, uh, Beta Ursae and show off the mine and where we are on it. I have the happy song playing in my head now. I can't get that song out now. If you watched the previous video, you'll know what the happy song was. Try editing constantly having that song in your head. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Uh, wow, that's an ugly potato ship. Okay. It's one ugly potato. Okay, and uh, ahead is the... Um, obelisk carrier. This is the carrier that was the reward for completing the uh, featured episode. Singular. Although the featured episode was awesome. Um, it's called Sphere of Influence. You now get it from Malrihan. And uh, it was pretty awesome. It was, it was, I have to give this to them. If that's the bar they're shooting for future mission content, it was badass. Now I would just like more mission content. <coughs> um... It was awfully Mass Effect-y. Um, I was getting a, like a distinct Mass Effect my, uh, my vibe off of it. You know, Mass Effect without the sucky third act is what it felt like. Okay, that was jumpy. Okay, so we are. This is the um, Vlugta system, and uh, we have our star bases here. I'm going to go in for a closer look because I haven't taken a closer look before. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, turn on maneuvering. This is something else that is new, is the um, cruiser comma rays. Um, okay, that's under construction, it almost looks like. Um, cruiser comma rays give you... Is there an accolade for like doing this now? Because there wasn't before. There's usually an accolade for like like do like flying through things or close to things or what have you. Nope, still nothing. Um, so, like, one of them gives you, like, better maneuvering, one of them makes your shields uh, slightly more durable and, like, recharge slightly faster, another one makes your energy recharge faster. Um, or redu it doesn't make them faster, it reduces the energy cost. And um, they're, or they're like paladin auras, I believe is the way um, Gecko was talking about them on Podcast UGC when he first started mentioning them. <coughs> still a little sick. But, um, basically, you, like, if you're a cruiser, you can, like, hit one of these buttons, and it'll send out an aura that will upgrade, that will give you a one of these buffs, and also anybody within 5km of you. So, um, the way, what I've found is you usually end up, like, uh, especially in STFs, um, is I usually find myself switching between these situationally. I don't use one of them constantly. Um, like, for example, if we're taking on the tactical cube at the end of Infected, um, I usually hit the shields, um, because I usually draw its ire very quickly. Um, you know, if it's something, if I'm laying siege to something, or if it's something that's slower than me that I don't have to worry about outmaneuvering, or if I'm, like, on a timer and I just need to put out as much heat as I can, I, uh, use the weapons aura, reduce that reduce that energy weapon cost because I use lots of beams and beams are very drainy. Um, if it's a timed event where I'm up against a fleet of things and I need to fly around and take things out as fast as possible, I go with maneuvering. Um, I also go with maneuvering when I'm just trying to get around, makes it a bit easier. So, 
I'm going to stick with that. So, and the with maneuvering, maneuvering is probably the best of all three in terms of no, how you notice it because it is really noticeable with maneuvering. It gives you a solid, like it gives me a solid plus. That's actually let's do that. Let's let's see. That's that's the shuttle. Stop going to the shuttle. Okay, so my turn rate right now is 17.2 in a galaxy. That's pretty remarkable. When I turn off maneuvering, it goes to 14.2. So that's a solid plus three turn rate. Um, it's a, it's a uh, yeah plus three turn rate. Um, so yeah, that's pretty impressive. Especially for a cruiser, because all peop the people's big lament about cruisers, mostly because they suck at flying them, was that they couldn't do anything. They couldn't turn at all. Um, so yeah, so here we see the mine, and this is not the mine. This is the mine. Um, this is actually the mine here. Um, this is the mine facility. I like how it's sideways. You know, I like how it's at an how it's not like just like sitting right side up on top of something. I like that, and uh, it shows when you like beam down and like look up. I've been to somebody's mine here though, um, that is like relatively complete, and it shows. It, like you you actually like see the view from that mine. It's quite it's quite awesome looking. Um, so here we have the development, I believe, facilities. Both of these just look like big office complexes in space, which is what I imagine they are. Not like the office complex, because there there actually is a star uh, Starfleet starbase referred to as like an office complex type. Um, it's the one you saw in mo it's the one they made in motion picture and proceeded to reuse all the way into Deep Space Nine. I think they reused it in Voyager as well. Um, they reused it as Regula. They reused it as Starbase three seven five. In DS9, they, um, you've seen it a ton of times. Saw it a ton of times in TNG as well. All right, let's go ahead and beam down. Um, beam to the surface. Okay, here we are in the dilithium mine. Um, it doesn't look quite too different because we haven't done many... Um, we don't have access to the elevator. We haven't done many, or any, really, um, interior upgrades that because those cost a sh uh, shitload of zen. Uh, what we do have available are fleet advanced warp cores now. Um, uh, advanced and advanced fleet um, singularity cores. I really need to get Captain Rehan leveled up and invite him into this fleet um, because he's going to be like the like my other guy in this fleet. I used to have like an alt, another alt that was in the fleet that contributed stuff when he had it. Um, that I contribute stuff stuff with him when he had it uh, on hand to help out. I'm going to have to do that with my Ramulan. Um, we've got the foreman. He's got some uh, rare do, uh, DOF assignments. We also have some Horta Miners. Um, this was from visiting a friend's, uh, Starbase. We don't have the purple quality ones yet. Do have the green ones, though. Um, let's see. But, yeah, we can get a rich dilithium vein, and we can get a bunch of, um, energy credits. Which, how much? Yeah, I know it's energy credits. How much? Okay. Security. Maintenance engineer. Okay, make me proud. Um, those are the only two we have available. Uh, more ones unlock as we can, as we will continue. Um, so, or will be unlocked as we continue. So yeah, we got all the green miners here. We got all the green miners. You want green miners? We got them. Um, still don't have bank access. I think that's really lame. I think it's lame that they require you to have like bank access. Or to get, or like they require you to like ha to like, um, like do like upgrade your base all over again to get bank access. I think once you unlock it on the main star base, like the bank and the exchange access, so you should have it by default on all your holdings. I think that would be awesome, but they don't work like that way, for whatever 
something. Anyways, so we have um, a bunch of consoles now. We have enhanced RCS consoles. Uh, we have resist all and resist kinetic um, armor consoles. I'd just go with resist all. Um, but uh, the weird thing is, like, there are like 10, 11, 12. This is one of the things that they said they were going to avoid with the Dyson, is because everybody was sick of, like, the Mark 10 equipment, because no, who the fuck's going to get the Mark 10 equipment once they get to level 50? You know, like, who the fuck is going to get that? You know, like, that would have been useful, like, 10 levels ago? Like, shit, 20 levels ago? That would have been useful? It's not useful anymore. You know, it's... <laughs> so... You know, so it's it's still kind of bizarre that it's still giving out Mark 10 equipment. I would rather just, like, give out Mark 11 advanced equipment up front, or just the regular Mark 12 advanced equipment that you get from the regular Starbase up front. And then, um, like, the, the uh, like just have advanced and elite. You know, like you have with the warp cores, like you have with the uh, weapons, like you have with the uh, starship equipment. Just have, like advanced, excuse me, advanced neutronium and elite neutronium. Just just do that. And, um, I, it's really bizarre to me that, that there's, like, Mark 10, 11, 12. Like, I think you really should have just gone, like, the advanced and elite versions. Here, guys. I think that would have been way better than this madness. Yeah. So we got that. Um... Enhanced RCS Accelerator. It, um, but the good news is... Let's see, all res. The good news is that... And I, I, have, I have blacked out the uh, thing. You get over there. Um, the good news is even the Mark 10 stuff is better than regular Mark 12 blue stuff. So I have a Mark 12 blue RCS Accelerator... It is a plus 35% flight turn rate. Um, the Enhanced RCS Accelerator Mark 10 um, gives me 9.4 kinetic damage, 9.4 all energy damage, and this is with the all res, all res perk on, or buff or something on it. Trait. All of these things are taken with the, mo with the all res mod on it. Let's just say, call it a mod, weapon mod. Um, and a 37.5%. So not much. It is not much better, but it is better. I'm not sure that that would be, you know... I'm not sure you would want to spring for that if you've got, a, like, a Mark 12 or what have you. Because that's probably not better than that. But if, you've, if all you've got is a blue, you can get that and pick up some kinetic damage resistance, too. That's fine. Uh, and, of course, you got, like, the Enhanced Monotanium Alloy. I'm not going for that. Um, the interesting stuff is the Neutronium Alloy. So you have the 18.8 .8 kinetic damage, which is, again, better than normal. Um, uh, the, nor the normal Neutronium Alloy is 17.5, so it's still better, it, even though it's not much. But it comes with an added 18% flight turn rate buff. Um, which is far better than the Mark 10. Uh, RCS Accelerator, because that only gives you a 2% flight turn rate buff over the regular one. No, this one gives you, like, an additional 18% flight turn rate, so if you want to get one, if, if it's turn rate that you're looking for, get this. And it, and it even gives you, like, slightly better uh, kinetic damage resistance. So, yeah, like, get that. Get that one. Get that one. Um, don't get, like, the... Like, if you, if you really want a good RCS accelerator, if you're really jonesing for one, then, um... Then the, the enhanced RCX accelerator... RCX accelerator marks 10. That can do you. You can also get it in hull HP flavor, which gives you, um... Uh, not, plus 9.4 Starship Structural Integrity, which is not much. Um... The uh, Mark 12 version is 10.6, so like that's not much in terms of like additional structural integrity. Um, really, 
the enhanced RCS accelerator plus all res. That seems to be the place where it go to go. And the Mark 12 gives you a four, plus 42.5 percent flight turn rate. That is monstrous um, compared to the version most people have through the crafting system, which gives you plus 35 percent. That's going to be recognizable. Really looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, and um, the enhanced neutronium. If you're a cruiser, uh, these are probably going to be the two that you want because the Mark 12 Enhanced Neutronium gives you a, an additional 21.2% flight turn rate buff, and it's got 21.2 kinetic and all-energy damage, so uh, resistance. Those are probably going to be the place you want to go. That's going to be fantastic. Um, but yes. Um... Yes, in fact, let me go ahead. Uh, should I pick up uh, Enhanced Neutronium Alloy? Should I pick some up now? They're only like... Yeah, they're only like... Um, they're actually like super cheap. They're super cheap too, which is nice. Although we do have one Dilithium. We do have like the first level Dilithium discount, which is, gives us a 4% discount on costs. Um, so, it is cheaper than it would be normally. But... Um, 2400 for a Mark 10 console, 2400 uh, dilithium and 12,000 fleet credit. That's actually fairly cheap, so I'm going to pick up one of these. Since they're better than what I got right now anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of these and another. Um, let's see. No, I don't want the monotanium. And uh, pick up the RCX Accelerator All Res. Better than what I got anyways right now. Anywho. And, uh, ooh, what's this? Oh! Dyson Equipment Requisition, Tier 0. Uh, what did I get? Uh, Science Shield Refrequencer, Mark 12. What do you do? Uh, plus 18.8 .8 Starship Graviton uh, Generators. I'll see if that'll sell on the exchange. Um, let's see. Uh, enhanced Neutronium Alloy. You go there. And Enhanced uh, RCS Accelerator. You go there. All right, I don't expect a super recognizable buff in turn rate, but should be there. I wonder why I got that. Where did I get that? Did I get that just for starting that project, or where the hell did that come from and why? When did I get that? That's strange and unusual. Um, okay, so something else that is new while I'm here on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and put that on. This is the Federation Combat Environmental Suit. It used to be available in the C-Store, and it is now... Let it load in. It is now a veteran perk. If you're a 500-day veteran, you get a uniform variant, you get this EV suit, and... Um, why are the perks for a 500-day? Used to be for a 500-day veteran, you got like a, a vice admiral ship, but then they moved that, they moved that goal post back um, for whatever reason. So this used to be available in the C-Store. Um, it is now only available to uh, 500-day veterans. If... The way I... It's not that I don't appreciate that it no longer costs 700 Zen for, like, a character only unlock that you can only claim once. You know, it's, it's not that I don't appreciate that. Let's go ahead and, like, hide that weapon because that looks goofy. Um... I appreciate it. I love I love this EV suit. It's a Canon EV suit. It looks fantastic compared to the normal one. I appreciate it. I really do. I think it's awesome that they did that. Uh, might have handled it a little bit differently. I might have left it available in the C store. Might have lowered its price a little bit, and it might have made it like um, given like uh, veterans like a free claim, a fr like a free claim for it. Like you can go and claim it as much as you want. Like like, um, or I'm, I would have made it available through like a Starfleet only reputation system. This game really needs faction reputation systems. Like it, it needs faction rep uh, rep uh, reputation systems so you can like represent your faction as opposed to everybody else's, um, and like get faction specific gear like Federation sets that improve phasers and photon torpedoes or what have you. It really needs a f reputation system. Um, 
like like the factions really need a reputation system of their own to give them a little bit more identity because everybody is doing everybody else's stuff at all times. So yeah, but I honestly would not have been this magnanimous. Like, um, with, like, who gets it. Like, if you're a 500-day veteran, go. You get it for free. You can claim it as many times as you want. You can get it for all your buffs. I wouldn't have been that magnanimous with it. I wouldn't have been that giving with it. I would have made you work for it a little bit, but I would have still made it available via normal progression in the game. Um, and, yeah. So, like, I would have made it available. I would have made, like, like say, a 25th century version available through a Federation reputation system and like left the first contact version in the store for those who wanted it and like like had like a but had a 25th century standard federation uh ev suit so you weren't always running around in the shitty looking cardassian ones um or the shitty the shitty looking dominion ones i should say because you get it from a dominion ship and all of them look like it but um yeah so you're gonna be seeing the cv suit around a lot there's also a romulan ev suit um, and a Klingon, and the Klingon EV suit. If you're a 500-day vet veteran, you can get them for all factions, and you can, you can get your faction EV suit for free, and you can, well, it's not free because you subscribe for 500 days to get it, but you get what I mean. You can just walk up to your faction's hub. That's, that's Earth Space Dock for the Feds, First City for the Klingons, or Malrihan for the Romulans, and, uh, or Fleet Command for the Romulans, I should say. Go to your faction hub, and claim an EV suit for you and your boffs. And that's going to make stuff on Nukara. It's going to make um, the uh, Tier 4 and 5 reputation stuff from uh, the New Romulus reputation. That's going to make it a lot more interesting, or at least less ugly. <laughs> Look, we got some pretty looking EV suits to make the ugly le go on less here. And you can run around Nukara with your uh, brand spanking new shiny EV suit. And one assumes future content, because I really want them to do, like, space content. Like, now like now that they had that, they developed that tech for, like, um, Second Wave, and they've got, like, stuff requiring you to, to uh, use an EV suit, I want to see more stuff like that. I want to see actual, like, spacewalking in this game. Like, and actual reasons to break out, like, the space suit. You know? I want to, like, that would be awesome. That'd be great. Be great! Be great! Ah! Anyways. Turn that off. He's breathing heavy. I like the lights on the side. Uh, lights on the side. Um, this is the suit from First Contact. It was introduced in First Contact. It was used a few times in Voyager, mostly towards the tail, mostly um, towards the second half of the series when Seven showed up. I don't recall them using this suit terribly often before first contact was made um uh i i know i do remember episodes where like uh a couple of characters were like drifting in space um for for like the entire episode it was tom and balana it was tom and balana we were like drifting in space for the entire episode there was also an episode where they had like vented all the atmosphere from a deck trying to like uh contain an undine um then known as species 8472 um, there was the demon, uh, there was the demon planet episode where they were running around in these EV suits. Um, they liked to use them whenever they could in Voyager after First Contact came out, because in all honesty, it is a cool looking space suit. Um. I think that's about all. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Although, I do, I do still like the, um, the dead spacey looking... Um, regular EV suit. I don't have it on hand. I got, like, they made these available the moment I got, like, the Shattering Harmonics EV suit to have an EV suit that didn't look like, terrible, like, that, that looks slightly Starfleet-ish. Like, the moment I got that, they're like, all right, Federation EV suits. Y if you're a veteran, you can go claim them. And I was like, shit! I just spent dilithium on this thing! God damn it! Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, that's a little tour of what we've accomplished so far in uh, on Outpost Mythic. Let's go ahead and uh, return to the sector. Ah. 
Shit. I should have chat. I should have seen. No, I'll do that later. Load. There we go. I should have. I should have seen what the uh, different. What difference the stuff made in my turn rate. But I'll check. I can check that um, as soon as I get where we're going because we are going. We are going to the Dyson Sphere, and I need to. Um, Oh, oh, I can complete the Omega standoff. All right. Tower control. Uh, we could use your help driving the Voth away from the control towers in the contested zone. These towers are integral to our control of the area. If the Voth hold them, they'll be able to call in reinforcements and overwhelm us. Can you take the fight to the Voth and help us gain control over the area? Okay, sure. Okay. Um, uh, let's transwarp to Tau Dewa. Can't transwarp to the Fleet Spire yet. Jesus! Okay. Well, that hauled ass, didn't it? Need to check with Locke, see if what he's been pouring into the engines. Well, actually, that provides me a good opportunity here. Let's go ahead and uh, visit the bridge. <clears throat> so this is the Origin Bridge, which ironically fits in with the naming scheme of the Starbase. Um, but... It's called the Origin Bridge because this is the new default bridge. This is the bridge you start the game with. It blows all the other bridges out of the water, so I don't know what they're going to do about that. Also, you should be careful because the fish are radioactive. This, may, this room may not be safe for you to enter. If you enter it, you may not have children, so be careful. In fact, I'm going to break out the environment suit right now. There we go. We should be safe. Um, same ready room, although when I, like on Tribble during the tutorial, the lighting in the ready room is much darker. It, it's much more dimly lit. I, ho I hope they, they fix this. I would really hope that they... Um, I, I would really hope that they decide that they fix this. Uh, in fact, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Graphics and environment. Let's see, origin. <coughs> cough, cough. Sick, sick. Okay. Let's see. Low in. Let's see. Hang the ready room from the origin. Edge. The fish are glowing. Like they're radioactive. If the glow can be seen from outside when the doors are closed. Huh. I'm scared. Okay. Submit. Successfully submitted ticket. ID 2 million 90 so. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, this has got a really... Oh, this has got an obnoxious glow, too. The, con the, the radioactivity has spread to the console. Or maybe the console made the fish radioactive. Huh. There's something going on with the lighting in this room. Because the lighting in this room is really bizarre. Um, yeah, if you look out the window, you'll notice we're at warp. We are warping backwards, though this has allegedly been fixed. Um, this has allegedly been fixed, the ship warping in reverse, um, although we have this had not been fixed. Also, uh, dear Cryptic, it would be nice if there were some kind of backdrop out there. You know, like some kind of, like, starry, like... Um, muted, starry backdrop, so it didn't look like you were, we were just traveling through a vortex in the middle of nowhere. 
you know? As if it looked like there was actually a destination out there for us to get to, you know? It would, it would be, that would be great. <laughs> Just like a very muted backdrop of stars. Locke, Locke, what kind of Java... Let me turn, turn this off. Locke, what kind of Java have you been feeding our engines? It's not like I'm like it's not like I'm I don't I'm not coming down on you for anything but damn the next time you pour some spirits into the warp nacelle could you like warn me <laughs> cuz that was pretty vicious that really hauled ass um uh, is my stations are weird stations for some reason are like not registering occasionally but this is actually a better galaxy bridge than all of the in-game galaxy bridges. I, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, there's also some problems with the new L cars. You may have already noticed um, more IP-appropriate L cars are all over the place. They are systematically converting all of the game's L cars into this, although you can see there's some mapping problems that they are already aware of. Um, they were already discussing this on the forums. Apparently when many of these console surfaces were um, v, uh, VW wrapped, or UVW wrapped, I should say, um, they weren't done quite well. So you've got like weird stuff going on like that. So they're aware of that, um, but uh, Thomas the Cat has done a really good job on these L cars. Um, I think the placement could be could be done. I think there could be a bit more variety, so they're not all analyzing the nexus. Um, but you know, I think. But the thing, the cool thing about L cars is it's really easy to replace little bits and bobs of L cars. That's one of the reasons. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why Okuda came up with it because it was really easy to like mix and match different things to make it look like it was like displaying different information about something else. So. Yeah, at some point, if um, Thomas could give it a pat, could give the L cars a pass and make everything more, a bit more varied in what it's displaying, um, that would be cool. Because ev everybody on the ship seems to be very intently analyzing the Nexus or whatever the hell that is. Um, you know, some like L cars ship displays, like you see on the Defined. I, I, allegedly, he based it upon the Defined L cars in the Belfast interior. Um, but really cool, really slick looking. He did a really good job. It just needs a little bit more polish. And, um, yeah, it looks cool. It looks cool. Um, I do wish it looked a bit more backlit. Like, like more, like looked more like it was like a, like a, like a piece of plastic. <laughs> That's terrible. It looked more like it was a, like the shows. Like bat, like a black pit, uh, backlit, um, uh, sort of like clear plastic with like colors inked in, but um, yeah, you can tell. Although like he's going for the movie look here, because in the movies the L cars are all working models and they're more active looking. They're like, especially if in a movie like Nemesis, the L cars are insanely busy in Nemesis. If you look at the background, um, but yeah, they're aware of like these mapping issues, and uh, you still see like the old crappy blue L cars next to these. But yes, um, this is a better galaxy. I, I say it again. This is a better galaxy bridge than the galaxy bridge. It's kind of bizarre. When are you guys doing a TNG interior, please? Because this is this is making me a little jelly. Also, I should know there are new. There is a new interior kit. There is a new interior kit um, introduced in the new tutorial. I don't know if that picked me up or not because it skips during loading screens. There is a new interior kit introduced in the tutorial, but there are not any new interiors to use. You are still using the old interiors um, for your ship, uh, which is kind of jarring uh, if you've been through the tutorial. So you, the, the interior of the ship you start with looks very different from this. It looks much better than this. And, um, yeah. And then you come, and then you like switch to like that like interior just now, and it's gonna be really jarring. But um, all the turbo lifts work. There's a little bit of clipping with the doors. Um, not this one. 
that one certainly. And you can see the radioactive fish from outside the ready room. Yeah. Ready room's on the wrong side for it to be a galaxy bridge, but it's still better than the default ones by a long shot. It looks better, it's proportioned closer. You know, it's got it's actually got the actual skylight that a galaxy class bridge has. And it looks like a precursor to the Odyssey Bridge. It's got that cool look. Doesn't have like the super duper holograms all over the place. But this looks like a bridge set. You know, th this looks like a bridge set that you would have seen in like TNG or Deep Space Nine. You know, almost. It's a little huge for that. You know, um, like th like this area is a little huge for that. But it looks. It's probably it's probably one of the better the best uh, Starfleet bridges this game has, and it's totally free. It's completely free, um, uh, whether you've been playing for a long time or just started the game, you're going to have it automatically. So good on them for that. Good on them for introducing a new interior, a better looking interior, for absolutely nothing. Um, I, I just hope that the new interior kit debuts soon because I'm really tired of the interior. <laughs> I'm really tired of like the super huge, ridiculous um, interior full of recycled elements. I would rather I would much rather have a much better looking interior, especially with that new, interesting, really cool looking transporter room, which looks nothing like the transporter room you use in Stranded in Space because they haven't changed that yet. Because um, they're still using the old interior kit. And I'm looking forward to the new stuff they make with the interior kit. And I'm looking forward to not flying in reverse. I'm definitely looking forward to not flying in reverse. That's got that's a plus. Uh, that will be a plus when I'm no longer flying in reverse. Alright, let's go ahead and leave the ship interior. Um, now that I have demonstrated it. Let's go, let's try and find Victory Spire. Cough. Okay, you gain access to the Solonay Dyson Sphere. No, I don't want to talk to the user out. Um, through this transwarp gate that, that literally just pops in from nowhere. I'm not joking. There we go. I'm not joking. That's literally where it comes from. It comes from nowhere. Oh, halt, halt the Voth incursion into the minefield. All right. So where the fuck? Um, okay. Found missions. To Fleet Spire. Okay, so you go north to go to the Fleet Spire. Or I'm uh, relatively north. But, um... There is some bad shit going on in the minefield. Let's see if there's anything we can do about that. And also fire off the comma ray. The comma ray make, is really useful here because you have atmospheric resistance while you're flying. I don't think I'm going to get there in time to help out at the minefield. I don't think so. I will get there in time to help this guy out, though. Let's see if the graphics glitch again. Um, no sir. No. 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 There we go. So the Voth are kind of tough. Um, there's some tough. Their ships are really tough. 
probably the hardest opponents in the game so far, although give it a month. Give it two months. And there'll be trash mobs just like everybody else. Uh, you shielded the wrong sh side of your ship, you fool. Um, so yeah, they have like the, uh, basically like this, um, shield they can put up. No. They have the shield that they can put up that, uh, protects, makes them impervious to damage from a certain side. From a certain shield facing, I should say. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a little shield recharge. Okay. They gotta kill the ward ships, um, because the ward ships will revive... Doctrinal differences? Hmm. The ward ships will revive shit. Um, Voth ships aren't permanently... Like, they, they take a while to die. Um, if a ward ship comes, they can basically bring that ship back from the dead. You don't want that, so geek the mage. Um... You gonna blow up anytime soon? Hey, you gonna blow up anytime soon? Hey, you gonna blow up anytime soon? Now I wish the game handled that for every have handled things that way for everybody so other ships would have a chance to like rescue somebody. You know? I wish it worked like that, like it worked on ground a little bit where you had like a certain amount of time before you blew, so like somebody could like come in and like swoop in and save you. That would have been really cool. Also, is that the Spire music? The Spire has its own theme, and it's actually pretty good. Let me see. And that was the uh, Spire theme, just a little bit of it, and uh, it's actually pretty good. I wish more, I wish, they really need to, like, just, like, bulk replace the music in this game the, with, with, like, better music, and with less obnoxious music, too, because there's still that that one piece of music that I can't stand, like, the, the one piece of music where the choir is going nuts when nothing is going on. I hate that song. Um, they really need to just, like, replace the music with less obtrusive, more atmospheric music in this game, and I think the soundtrack will be a lot better for it. Uh, you're cleared to travel to the Fleet Spire. Well, good, because it's mine. <laughs> I live there. Ours, I should say. But I... Uh... Thing is, I've been the one... Like, I, I don't want to, like, be an asshole here, but I've been more or less flying solo on the Fleet Projects for the mine. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I'm doing it, why I'm making this video right now, even though I'm not really feeling up to doing it. Um, I'm, ha I'm having fun, though. Uh, I love how I love the ace combatness of this area. I think that's really cool. You know, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of ace combat with starships. Anything that reminds me of good ace combat, not ace combat assault for reason, is good. 
And uh, it also reminds me of Halo 4 a lot, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, basically, like, I've been flying really solo on getting this... Uh, get, getting, ke getting and keeping the dilithium mine going. So, yeah, like, if you look at where I am on the leaderboard, I've been contributing so much shit that I'm, like, insanely ahead of everybody. Um, it's not that I give... It's not that I care. It's not like the leaderboard, like, fucking matters. But I have been flying solo. It would be nice to have some help with it, you know? To, ha to have somebody who was, like, working on it with me. But, um, it's the holiday season, so most of the fleet members are probably not going to be there all, like, to help me out with that stuff. <laughs> I don't have an excuse, because I'm the fleet leader, so I gotta do something, you know? But, um, they got, they got, uh, they gotta visit their families, they gotta do stuff. I might be going for a week or two. More like a week, actually, uh, for Thanksgiving, but I will be uploading, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night for this month, uh, so you guys can check that stuff out. Check it out. And, uh, so yeah, going back to the ace combatness of this area, um, it, it it really does remind me of ace combat. In fact, you can get pretty close to the ground. And um, you'll actually, like, eventually you'll start encountering atmospheric friction, although there isn't really much feedback to tell you you're doing this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's an invisible wall. So you can actually get relatively close to the ground. And, um... It's not super detailed, but it's just detailed enough to look good even... To look more or less good. You know? It's not, it's not like... It's not gonna be like stopping any shows. But it does look good enough that you can get pretty close to the ground and it still looks kinda cool. You know? just give you an idea of like these this massive structure and the cities built in it and now and th and this is why it reminds me of ace combat where you're like engaging in combat but with starships above like cityscapes and stuff i and like huge industrial areas you know i love this fucking area this is my favorite part of the game okay i like i love this i love it better than nukara i love it better than defera i love it better than new romulus i'm going to have so much fun in this place this place is awesome. Um, they did a really great job with it, although um, some of the tech they implemented probably is doing some weird stuff to the game, which you'll probably notice if you watched the video before this one. Uh, if you haven't, go check it out, sci-fi versus.blogspot.com. Um, really kind of... <laughs> Really weird goings on. Really weird stuff happening there. Um, but yeah. Um, but it looks really cool. And on to the other thing it reminds me of. It reminds me a lot of Halo 4. I loved Halo 4. I played the shit out of Halo 4. And the big the big part of Halo 4 is it takes place within like a micro Dyson sphere. Um, it's a, or Dyson shell. It's properly called a Dyson shell when it's like a big solid structure. It's actually only called a sphere when it's an array of satellites around a star. But they called it a sphere in TNG, so we're calling it a sphere here. Um, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of, they called it a sphere in this, and now we're kind of, like, damned to, like, call it that for eternity in this franchise, even though that's not its proper name. But one could assume, and th this is me being fan wanky, one could assume that at some point, like, the terminology switched, or the terminology was changed a little bit, because that kind of happens sometimes. Um, <coughs> you know, you got to factor in, like, several hundred years of uh, scientific discovery and technological progress and terminology changes. So I can call it a sphere unironically. I just, um, I, I just like have to point out that it's not entirely true. Um, so like, uh, but Halo Four takes place inside a micro Dyson shell, um, and uh, it, most of the game takes place in it. And then you get out, and you have like the big finale of the game, and then you come back to it <coughs> uh, for Spartan Ops. Spartan Ops takes place in this in this like big. Dyson shell, called Requiem. It was a, for, a forerunner shield world. And, uh, like, you know, like, 
all of Spartan Ops takes place in it, right up to the finale where they finally escape. And uh, it's really, I like Spartan Ops. Spartan Ops is really cool. This reminds me a lot of Spartan Ops, um, uh, especially in the way it looks. Like, it, like in Halo Four, you could like you could see the the other, you could see the actual sky above, like the false cloudy, sunny sky, you know. And you would see stuff like this. You would see patterns, like like in the in the inside shell of the of the planet you were in or the artificial world and you can see that here although this is mostly just a trick with perspective it's just a dome it's just you know it's a big dome over the map but it's a dome where the uh the texture has been mapped and uh colored in to make it look to make it look like you're in a bigger place than you are. So it is a trick with perspective, but it still looks really cool. And of course, if you look up, you can see the star, the uh, Dyson shell sphere, whichever you like to call it, was built around. And that's a nice... I like that, too. Because that that's the entire purpose of a structure like this, is to gather all of the radiant energy of a star. You know, this is, that's the purpose of a shell, it's the purpose of a sphere... To, to gather all the radiant energy of a star to power the needs of an advanced civilization. And this civilization was certainly advanced. Um, I, won't, I don't want to spoil the implications that Sphere of Influence leaves, but um, we may be kicking in somebody's doorstep here um, with, do, with like the task force doing what it's doing. <coughs> Again, if you haven't played Sphere of Influence for... for Turing's tits, go play it. Just, just, just play it. I need to wet my whistle because my throat's getting dry again. I start coughing, my throat gets dry. I love the cityscapes. I love how varied the cityscapes are. Um, like, uh, like <laughs> there's a lot of shrunken down assets. Immediately, like you can see this, and then you see a bunch of them down there. You see a bunch of them over there. You know, like they're just smaller than that one. So yeah, they they've like used the same assets, but they've used them in places and altered their sizes in places just enough to make it look a little different. You know, just enough to to make it look more varied. And I think the cityscapes, especially the industrial scape, that's probably one of my favorite areas in this, is that whole industrial area. Um, like, up at the north of the contested zone. That place looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, this is our spire. This is Victory Spire. And uh, seeing as this Dyson Sphere shell thing has been uninhabited for a while... It looks pretty old and busted. And, um... It's covered in crap. It's all powered down. You know... I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, espouse the reason why everybody's here. Like, why this sphere shell thing is a big deal. Um, aside from the fact that it's a incredible technological... Con an incredible construct left behind by an insanely technologically advanced species, and that is the sort of thing Starfleet does. That's the sort of thing Starfleet would be interested in. It's like, holy crap, look at this place. This place is amazing. Like, we could spend, like, an entire lifetime just, like, exploring it. You know, that's what Starfleet does. But, um... There, there is a very important reason why everybody is here. And uh, if you like, if you know Voyager, if you if you watched Voyager, you already probably know the reason why they're here, or you probably have a good clue if you read the forums, or you had it spoiled for you on the forums. But um, again, play Spear of Influence. Spear of Influence is really good. <laughs> Um, let's see, let's go ahead and contact traffic control. And you can travel to allied space, return to sector space, you know, outside of the, uh, you know, back to Tau Dewa, basically, I'm assuming. I'm not, I'm assuming you don't just go out into the Delta Quadrant, although that would be interesting, if you, if you could. Um, and you can dog at the spire, let's do that.
Okay, so this is the interior of the spire. Over here we have the things that are the subject of the first featured project, which will open up and let you stand precariously miles above the surface and uh, gaze out into the distance, which you can see through these. Um, so you have, like, automatically extending stairs, automatically extending railways. Not quite OSHA compliant, but it's a valiant effort. Um, let's see. You can requisition space equipment. We don't have any space equipment to requisition, but you can get advanced fleet plasma integrated stuff. And elite fleet plasma integrated stuff. But do they have AMP? Uh, that's a good question. ACAP. ECAP. EWS. AMP, yes. Um, so yeah, I might, uh, yeah, I might get these. Is there a weapon to aux, though? I need a weapon to... Uh, AMP. Weapon to aux. There we go. Uh, efficient. Ooh, that's nice, too. Uh, plus 10% increase the base resistance rate of all power levels. Plus 66% increase the base regeneration rate of all power levels. Huh. Uh, plus 17.5 Starship Warp Core efficiency. 75% of your weapon power to auxiliary power. 3.3% uh, all damage for each subsystem with 75 or more power. Uh, slipstream speed bonus. Uh, repairs disabled engines. Hmm, it's nice. Or, let's see, show power to engine power. Okay. Alright, so yeah. Uh, we got, we can also purchase atmospheric flight training, although we can't because we haven't earned it yet. We have to get tier one. And this will make sure, this will make it so that you're, um, there's three levels, and you'll get less and less friction when you're traveling to the atmosphere. When you get them, you get um, fire, uh, uh, spire, uh, obelisk fighters that are increasingly effective. Um, you can get critical hit chance and uh, critical hit expose consoles. And um, for people with like two weapon slots, I would. Uh, I, I would go with, like, the stuff... Like, I would take one of each, you know? Let's see. Um, plus 3.9 Tetrion damage. Ooh, that's a lot better than the phaser stuff. I have, like... What do I have? I have, like, Mark 12s. I have Mark 12 phaser relays, which are, like, 28.1 damage, and they're blue. Um, so let's see. Um, so you can get them for, like, each... Uh, like weapon type and each damage type, and the ones for each damage type are more effective than each weapon type, um, because the <laughs> phaser thirty one point nine phaser damage. Oh yeah, that, oh oh that's nice. Plus a critical severity. So yeah, I'm gonna get one of each. I'm gonna get one of the vulnerability and one of the vulnerability locators. Um, and uh, that will give me a l bit of a leg up in damage. That'll be nice. Five. Um, yeah, let's run around this spire. Let's uh, take a look around. Um, they really went whole hog with developing this place. Like, this place is really cool looking. You got your, um, apparently not there. Um, why can't I go through this? Why does this door no work? What the fuck is over there? Oh, it's a lounge, because it's got the lounge. Or is it an office? Not my office! Open the damn door! Ah. Uh, um. Crap. So apparently, I guess you unlock these rooms when you unlock further tiers in the place, or you, like, get the power turned on. That's probably what it is, yeah, is you have to do the project to turn the friggin' power on. Yeah, because even, like, the walkways even aren't even extending, so yeah. Place is probably just off right now, and we're gonna have to, like, turn the power on. Yeah, all right. Be right back. Okay. Storm 69, no! Anyways, I think I need to wrap this up. <clears throat> uh, I've been talking for like an hour straight, and now it's starting to get to me. So, um... <coughs> yeah. I should not have done that. Apparently. 
So yeah, that's the uh, status of Special Tactics right now. So, if you would like to join Special Tactics and help out with... Forgot the names... That's a bad thing. And you would like to help out with Outpost Mythic, Westwood Hall, Victory Spire, or Origin Station, drop me in in-game mail at Alchemisted and request to join, and I will invite you, and you can help me work on <coughs> stuff. Yeah. I really should not have been talking for an hour straight. Send me an in-game message, and I'll invite you in, and you can help support Special Tactics. Um, so, yeah. That's about that. That's what's new in Star Trek Online. That's the, uh, a little taste of what awaits in the Solonay Dyson Sphere shell thing. I still can't decide what to call it. And, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's that. So, I will see you guys later. <coughs> when I'm not physically ill. So, later! If you liked what you saw and you'd like to try out Star Trek Online, you can download and install it through Arc, or you could download and install it through Steam. Steam comes with the added benefit of having Steam Wallet, which allows you to buy things in Star Trek Online without having to hand Perfect World your financial information. If you like the video, please rate and subscribe, and if you would like to comment, please follow the link in the description to the video page on SciFiVersus.com, where all of my playthroughs and shows are listed. That way I can actually see your comments and reply to them. Later! Thank you.